Alright, hey guys and welcome to this new video for the channel and I hope you've all had a fantastic New Year and Christmas celebrations. In this video today we're going to be looking at a Nintendo lineup for 2022 and make some predictions on what may come in 2022 and beyond. So, starting off with games we already know are coming, Pokemon Legends Arceus. This new entry for Pokemon is going to be the first ever open world Pokemon game with the camera being behind the character and being able to be changed on the fly. Sort of like how it is in the wild area in Sword and Shield. Which is going to launch on January 28th this year, so it's not that far off really. We've seen a few gameplay and teaser trailers so far showing off the game, but I believe we may have an early Pokemon Presents in 2022 to show off the game as well as maybe some Pokemon Platinum DLC for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and some new Pokemon Unite content as well. We may also see some new Pokemon merchandise, that sort of thing, maybe a limited edition Switch. I predict Legends Arceus will be a big success for Nintendo, but may be held back by some graphical limitations on the Switch, as we've already seen in the trailers some frame rate issues and maybe some uh, draw distance issues as well. But overall, I think we're going to have a good time with the game. It's going to be a lot of fun because it looks amazing and I cannot wait for the type of traversal that's in the game where you can just pick up on a Pokemon and just fly away uh, as well as actually battling in the wild where it doesn't take you out of the open world you're actually battling in the open world which I think looks amazing. Next up another game I'm hyped for being Splatoon 3. I predict a mid-summer 2022 release for Splatoon 3 being either June or July as Splatoon has always had a summery feeling to it. Uh, as it deals with water and things like that. I think we'll see a Squid Research Lab Nintendo Direct solely focusing on Splatoon 3 around March, April time to further market the game but we also could see some things at E3, that is if E3 is on this year with the uh, general state of the world that we're currently in. I'm really excited for this one as I love the first two games and cannot wait for the new story campaign and multiplayer as well as hopefully the return of something akin to Salmon Run possibly. I predict the campaign to focus on Pearl and Marina, as the last Splatfest in Splatoon 2 was Chaos vs Order, in which Chaos won and the story mode may be a reflection upon this themed power struggle, and maybe focus on the world as a whole with Inkopolis and uh, Splatville as well, which is the new area. Then we've also got Kirby and the Forgotten Land, the first ever 3D open world Kirby game. I'm not a massive Kirby guy as I've only ever played Star Allies and the first ever Kirby but I've always wanted to try the series more in depth. Hopefully this game will be brill as it looks really interesting and at its core I love 3D platformers. This game seems to be focusing on platforming and exploration. Also the game looks so cute and so amazing, I love it so much. Hopefully it will be something like Mario Odyssey or the 3D Mario games as I think those are sort of the golden standard for 3D platformers. Now another game I'm massively excited for is Bayonetta 3. We finally got the first teaser trailer, as in the first gameplay trailer, sorry, for Bayonetta 3 this year. 1 and 2 are amazing, straight up 9 out of 10 games, which honestly, in my opinion, deserve more recognition. Bayonetta 3 looks absolutely mental, in which we can now play as these like massive kaiju fights with demons that Bayonetta summons from the first two games, also some new ones as well. I predict an October 2022 release to co coincide with Halloween, as Bayonetta has always sort of felt like a Halloween game to me. It's not horror, but it sort of has these like spooky elements to it, because uh, it deals with witchcraft and things like that, which I just love it, also with demons and hell and heaven and things like that. I expect the quality to be on par with the first two games, I expect this to be like an easy 8 or 9 out of 10 game, hopefully even more than that, and a real game of the year contender. And this will be one of Nintendo's standout games for 2022. Now, one game that needs very little introduction is the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is literally the most anticipated game of the year from any studio or any publisher, which Nintendo has kept very quiet on. I mean, we don't even have a name reveal yet. All we know is it's the sequel to Breath of the Wild. I mean, personally, I think the name will be something to do with Sky or Time or something to do with Link's Hand. All we know so far is that the game will really have new Sheikah Slate mechanics, like, Zelda, he can, like Link can st like, freeze time. As we saw with that boulder coming down the hill, he can like freeze time and then send it and reverse it, which looked amazing. 
which will hopefully bring up new puzzle solving elements in dungeons. And floating islands above Hyrule, which we've seen in all the trailers as Hyrule Castle sort of slowly ascends to the sky. And that something happens to Link and Zelda, which involves Link getting a new sort of glowy arm of some kind, which I think will be massive. As we see in the trailer, Link can literally phase through platforms from the bottom of them, which I think will be entirely based on his hand. I'm also hoping that we get a limited edition Switch or Switch Lite model for the game, possibly with a collector's edition. I'm also hoping that we get, for the first time ever in a mainline Zelda game, a playable Zelda. But I doubt this will happen because, as both trailers indicate, something obviously bad happens to Zelda in which we will have to go rescue her. I was sort of hoping that this game would focus on possibly Link, save, sorry, Zelda saving Link, but I don't mind at the end of the day. We all know the game's going to be amazing. And we also have loads more confirmed games coming out this year, like Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope, which focuses more on Mario Galaxy content, which I am absolutely loving so far. New DLC for Monster Rise, uh, Monster Hunter Rise, which is called Sunbreak, and the Advance Wars Reboot Camp, which looks like a lot of fun. As I, I love games like Fire Emblem, I've played for, I've played Advance Wars before, and it's pretty good to be honest. Now. Onto entirely unknown games for 2022. This is my prediction for this year. These are just sort of a few ideas that I'm going to spitball. So here we go. I firstly predict a new Mario Kart. I really, really want either a new Mario Kart 9 or some kind of Smash Kart where the game centers around Nintendo's All Stars racing together. Mario Kart 8 laid the groundwork for this sort of concept by adding Splatoon, Animal Crossing, F-Zero, Zelda, Excitebike content, things like that. I'd like to see a combination of old Mario Kart tracks, so a few returning tracks such as maybe Daisy Circuit, Toad Factory, those, those kind of tracks, as well as a few fan favourites such as like Coconut Mall, uh, Mario Circuit for Mario Kart 8, things like that as well as Nintendo themed tracks being from maybe Kid Icarus, Breath of the Wild, Animal Crossing, Donkey Kong, Metroid, F-Zero. We could even see some third party content like Final Fantasy, um, Metal Gear Solid, Pac-Man, Mega Man. We could see all those things. I'd love to see Sonic in a Mario Kart. I think that would be absolutely madness, but I'd love to see it. Anyway, we've also been hearing loads about a new 3D Donkey Kong platformer. I'd love to see this as it hasn't really been done since Donkey Kong 64 and I'd like to see a semi-open world game that at its heart is a collector fun like Mario Odyssey and Banjo-Kazooie. I fully predict this game to come out sort of um, early autumn, that sort of thing. I don't think it will be a holiday game as I think Nintendo's holiday will be pretty packed so far. Another new game that we could see is Pikmin 4. Pikmin 4 has been rumoured from all the way back in 2016, even further than that, it's been hinted at, where Shigeru Miyamoto said that they were working on the game and that it wasn't too far off in development. And we were all expecting this to either be a year one Switch game or a year two Switch game, but it just hasn't happened yet for whatever reason. Pikmin 3 has been re-released, also we have the Pikmin mobile game, so hopefully these are clear indicators that the game is at least in development, either for the Nintendo Switch or Nintendo's next console. But I'm hoping obviously it comes out this year or the year after. It could focus on some new characters and hopefully include some new types of Pikmin, and maybe adventuring around in new types of biomes, I'd love to see this for a Pikmin game. Hopefully we'll also see the release of some more third party games on the Switch, such as Genshin Impact, as we know this has already been confirmed that they're working on a Switch port, it just hasn't come out yet. Uh, the much-awaited Silk Song, and loads more as well. I'd also lead, personally like to see a port of the Persona game, so 3, 4, and 5, if we can't get uh, 5 Royal and 4 Golden and things like that. But I honestly doubt this will happen. I feel as though with all the hype with Persona 5 and Smash, I feel like this would have, if, if it was going to happen, it would have already happened. And lastly, I predict a, either a completely new IP for Monolith Soft, or the most anticipated Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now Xenoblade 2 is one of my favourite games of all time, so of course I'd love to see a sequel. I'd love to see a game where we are playing possibly as Rex, Pyramithra, as the new game could be a time skip, a time skip continuation of Xenoblade 2's story. 
Obviously, I'm not going to spoil that. I recommend you play it for yourself. It's an amazing game with an amazing story. I'd love to see a similar combat system and character dynamics where you get to really know each characters and you get sort of mini cutscenes with the characters interacting with each other. I really want that brought back as well with the amazing sort of open world, the incredible soundtrack. But the only two things I really want sort of fixed with a new Xenoblade would be better voice acting and audio mixing, as if I'm being honest. Um, the voice acting's not terrible, but across the board, the audio mixing is horrific. If you've played the game, you know the memes, you, kn you know exactly what I'm on about. Anyway guys, that's going to be it for all my 2022 predictions. Honestly, I mean, so far with the Switch, the best year with the Switch has easily been 2017. I believe that 2022 is going to be either on par or better than 2020, uh, sorry, 2017. I think 2022 is going to be amazing. And, I mean, looking at all these games that we've already got confirmed so far, I think it's going to be amazing. I mean, we're probably going to get a... Um, spring summer and autumn direct at some point showing even more games of 2022 and beyond so hopefully we're going to get some absolutely banging games this year i mean i really want mario kart 9 and xenoblade 3 i can't stress that enough <laughs> i mean if you look at the games we've got already like breath of the wild 2 and so on these games are honestly some of these games are going to be game of the year contenders and i think nintendo have a pretty stacked year and I think they've got it in the bag personally. I mean, the only way that they could mess up is obviously with the current state of the world, with the restrictions that are in place, where with game development, we could see a couple of these games either delayed or they might come out rushed, as we've seen. But usually Nintendo's standard of quality is pretty high. So hopefully we won't see that at all. Anyway, guys, again, I hope you've had a fantastic new year and a fantastic Christmas break. And I look forward to making more videos like this going into the future. So take care and have a brilliant day. Bye guys.